Wonderful. And at this point, I think we're just about, uh, just about ready on our due time. So I would like to welcome everybody who's online to this uh, Google Hangout, uh, at which we'll be looking at the future of mobile technology in retail. Uh, my name is, uh, by way of short introduction, my name is Chris Scoble. I will be the moderator for the session. And I'll be trying to uh, facilitate discussions with uh, my two illustrious panellists here. I illustrious panellists, that's Paul Sheedy from Reward Technology. And uh, a bit further on my right, Judd Ferrer from Sparkle CS. Uh, they will be introducing themselves uh, a little bit later on. Um, delighted to say that we're joined by people from uh, all around the world. Uh, this is the second session we've run today. This morning, uh, I think we had people, uh, some from Europe, but it, perhaps it was a little bit too early for them, but lots of people from the Far East, Asia and Australia. And this afternoon, uh, we understand we have people online from Europe, from Russia, uh, South America, Canada, and perhaps a few from the US that we've been able to drag away from their Thanksgiving celebrations. Good, good, yeah, I was just going to say, if, if any of my family from the US is watching, I'd like to send us very happy Thanksgiving to them. Wish I could be home to see you all. Um, miss you all very much. Okay. Uh, I suspect you spotted the accent there, but uh, <laughs> Judd will, will introduce himself a little bit more in a minute. Um, as we said, we're on uh, level 39 of the tallest tower in Canary Wharf and Europe's leading accelerator hub for technology companies, which is an entirely appropriate venue for the topic we're covering today. Um, the sort of things that we're going to be talking about, just to give you an outline, will be... Uh, looking at the concerns of the retailers in this market, how can they build a sustainable mobile strategy which will uh, last into the future. We'll be looking at things from the customer point of view as well, uh, looking at what their demands are uh, as they relate to digital. Uh, we'll, we'll be looking at point of sale systems, which is um, Judd's particular the field of expertise, uh, where we see the retailers have huge investments in, in legacy systems and asking the question about how any digital solution can integrate with them. And throughout all of that, we'll be looking at the world of paper reward coupons and discussing how a possible digital solution could take their place. A couple of practical points before we fully kick off. Mm. I believe that there's a one-minute delay, so whatever we're saying, we've already said it by the time it gets to you. Uh, that has a little bit of a kick on uh, into the uh, when we start doing some polls because we will be asking you to do some online voting to get involved and interact with us. Um, I think there's one or two issues in the uh, session earlier today. Uh, I, uh, I believe that you need to press on the coloured button and then press send and that will then record your vote. So hopefully that will work for all of you. And uh, there is a chat room available so that if you have any questions or comments that you'd like to make to, uh, to the panel, um, please do that. Please join in. Um, what we're going to do by way of the order, we're going to uh, ask uh, Paul and Judd to answer a few questions on key topics as we go along. Uh, and then we're going to try and pick up some of your questions perhaps and uh, address those and then we'll get their conclusions at the end. Super. That's enough from me. <clears throat> So I'd like to uh, ask Paul a um, very simple question. If you could tell us a little bit about your background, you know, what, what, uh, sure. yeah. uh, what that is, and really what, what's motivated you to, to be here to, to share your views here today in this, in this forum. Sure. So I spent about eight years in um, data analysis and mm. looking at marketing systems for re retailers globally, uh, literally from America right across to Russia and everywhere else in between. Okay. Um, what, we, what, I, what we did there is really we, we, we saw that the, the issues that retailers have in terms of the mass, the mass marketing and then their in, individual marketing solutions. Um, the great thing is over the last decade, technology has helped retailers massively. I mean, it's just been transformational for them. The data that they have on each customer is unbelievable. Um, what, but what I saw was they were still using some systems like paper couponing, which is very antiquated. And then I was being hit with the other side of the equation, which was the latest in smartphones, mm -hmm. mainly designed by people who were completely had no idea about how retailers worked or how customers work with, with mobile uh, technology mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the relevance to the actual CPGs and FMCGs. Okay, and the uh, data that can be provided exactly. to them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It, it, it seemed there was a, there's a massive um, a gap in, in, in between these two solutions. So. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Before that, again, I was involved in engineering and digital communications oh, right, and stuff okay. like that. So I, I had a very wide uh, level of experience. And I realized there was a, a gap here with how it had to be filled. Okay. And people had to start looking at the solutions really based on what people want and what is possible and what's going to actually work for a retailer. Mm. So hence, we, we started Reward Technology about six, seven months ago, okay. put in place a, an expert team from all my experience mm. in the past. Mm. And um, we got off and running, and the rest is history. Okay, fantastic. And uh, Judd, a few words from you, perhaps? Um, yeah, I mean, in a, in a kind of a different uh, part of the retail uh, sector, my background is um, is from the point of sale marketplace. Right. Yeah. So, uh, since living here in the UK, uh, I've been here nearly 17 years. When mm -hmm. I first arrived, I just come out of working on some of the hot first dot com stuff in 1995, oh, 1996. Right. Uh, I've worked on the very first search engine, Pathfinder, which was Time Warner type vehicle and then I got here and have been the American not to boast too much but I got chucked right into the deep end in the mm -hmm. point of sale world worked for some of the big guys um, and really my whole tenure in that space was looking at how you could re-engineer point of sale to do more than it could do without necessarily having to replace it um, kind of ran into a little bit of a head-banging session with the guys that were quite keen to sell big, big licenses over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I struck out on my own and did a number of different retail projects and then kind of came to the conclusion that actually the, this paper coupon thing, which I was already very familiar with from my days at the point of sale, um, was something that was just a, a problem that was just holding a lot of things back. Mm -hmm. So I brought together uh, my business partner who unfortunately can't be here today, okay. but who is the chap who built Nectar, which is the okay. largest coalition loyalty yeah. platform here in the yeah. UK from a technology point of view. Yeah. And we set out with Sparkle to look at how we could challenge the, uh, the current mindset of what is possible with point of sale, yeah. how this world of digital can be incorporated into it without a huge amount of pain being inflicted on retailers. So, so but between the two of you, we're, pu we're pulling together many, many years of expertise in Absolutely. different parts of, yeah. of this chain. I think... We were talking uh, before, Paul, that, that between you, you've got sort of a vision about how things might be. Yeah, so yeah? We, we were, a mutual acquaintance actually mm. introduced us, you know, not, not, a, not a million years ago. Mm. And mm. Uh, we realised that when we met and we, and we spoke about where we'd come to this, you know, to this, to this actual path, that we'd have both approached the same problem, but from completely different angles. Yeah. Okay. And actually, the more we talked, the more we realised we'd, we'd basically covered off each other's issues on, on the, that final piece oh, right. of the, each, yeah. each other's journey. Mm. So... Um, I think for Judd, he realised that we'd come up with a common sense approach, mm. uh, and for us, we'd realised he'd actually completely solved mm. the post integration issue, which was mm. our sort of great grey area. Um, so that's really why we're working together, and it was it was a wise introduction, and one which is working out very well. And I think between us, we're going to try and take things on together and and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think I think on that note, I think one of the things that first grabbed me about Paul was he wasn't short of vision. Mm. You know. I think, I think you told me the story about what was Mrs. Jones and her card mm -hmm. and, uh, and how she could just have her offers tracked through store when she gets to store and the, you know, the right message at the right time. And, you know, it, it is that kind of utopian moment that we're all trying to get to. We all yeah. think that that's where the market can happen. Mm -hmm. But I, had to, I kind of had to break it gently to Paul that I said, look, you know, whilst that sounds like an absolutely fantastic vision, let me tell you a little bit of a story about how it really works on the retail operations and the mm. retail IT side and the obstacles that are there right now mm. um, that need to be addressed to make this vision a reality. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to talk about a few of the obstacles as, yeah, as we absolutely. go along. And I'm really hoping that we're going to be able to talk about Mrs. Jones again, about yeah. her experience <laughs> with her card as it I, goes I've not met her, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to. Well, I think there's an awful lot of Mrs. Jones out there, and I think those are the people that we really need to be yeah. thinking, thinking about today. So um, it would be good if we could just start off with our, our first um, poll question. Um, and I think you should be already seeing it on screen. And this is really around uh, the technology. And we're talking about and this, again, perhaps one of the obstacles or perhaps one of the, um, uh, the opportunities. And the question is, what will uh, be the winning solution that will enable customers and retailers to seamlessly communicate at the right time in the future? And if you would like to vote, as I said before, press the button and press send. That would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd really like to open this, this, uh, this area up to Paul and, and talk about um, technology and, and the rate of mobile innovation because that's increasing and is only likely to continue to do so. And ask you how you think that that rate of change is affecting the decision-making process or the decision-making ability of, of typical retailers. 
Sure. Well, I think, I think the, the, the key issue here is, is the fact that we're moving now at a pace that no one has ever seen before in any sort of industry. Um, you know, mobile innovation happens, it's a week-to-week, -week, almost month-to-month -month, month -month movement. Uh, and I think really for retailers, I feel very, very sorry for retailers, quite frankly. Um, I think many of them are sitting there just gobsmacked at, uh, how do I make a decision? How can I possibly make a long-term decision? Because you know, at the end of the day, these people are employed. They all have the jobs on the line, and they have to make long-term decisions in retail. It's not a short-term type. Uh, There's big type implications of for their businesses. There's huge got, implications, yeah. and you've got huge numbers of people you're, 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 um, as a customer base. So, you know, I, I think as I mentioned briefly before, I, I see it being broken into two sets. Okay. Those who have had to over the last couple of years really sort of sit down and go, right, that's what we're going to do, end the story, and basically put their fingers in their ears and. Sing la la la. Get on with it. Can't yeah. hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then there's the ones who are sitting there, and then every single time they've got another meeting about this, someone else comes in with a, another spin on things, another mm. innovation. Mm. Oh, that's actually falling mm. off the population or the popularity stakes mm. right now. Mm. And I think that really the biggest problem is that um, whereas before we had mobile phones, that was it. Mm. We now have Apple versus Android versus uh, Windows, who are sort of behaving themselves mm -hmm. a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But those. Apple and Android have really turned themselves into completely, uh, they're, they're like the Pepsi and the, and, uh, and the Coke of the world. Which is going to come out? Which, yeah. which, one are, uh, which one are you with? And does that, does, you know, people are yeah. so yeah. paranoid and so passionate about what brand they're with. Um, and these guys are all coming up with new, new patterns and new ways of doing things, and they don't want to share. So common platforms are very, very difficult. So unless we have a crystal ball which says which is going to win out in the future, we're not going to be able to, it's going to be really tough it's taking decisions. It's difficult, yeah. yeah, because I think they all want to have a little, they all want to have all of the, all of the yeah, pie. Yeah. And, 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 and that, so, so what you've got is you have an entire marketplace of vendors that are selling tactical solutions. Because as Paul okay. says, you've got mm. mobile guys who can come up with an app in a couple of months. Mm. Um, that can be used to do some type of marketing initiative, quick, quick change, quick agile, you know, very easy for these guys to be nimble and respond to what mm. consumers want mm. very quickly. That's not the way retail's been able to work. Retail has got to, has always gone down the road of long-term strategy right. because the time that it actually takes to put a plan in place to then make the changes technologically to their point of sale and actually then deploy that change, it takes months potentially a year, maybe even two, mm. just for one change. Mm. So you've got something moving at this kind of speed mm. and something moving at this, this kind, kind of speed. speed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a mismatch, yeah. Yeah, it's a total mismatch. And retailers can't think tactically in terms of mm. technology. They, they're just not able to do that. So I think when we look at what's the long-term strategy here or what's the big outcome of all this, mm. I think what we have to do is actually say to ourselves, well, hold on a minute, if we've already got this disconnect, how do we actually bring it back to this so that we can then start to formulate a plan mm. that makes sense for everybody? And that's really, um, that's really why I think we hit it off because mm. that's what Sparkle does. Yeah. Sparkle actually has looked at developing a solution because I'll be honest, when we started out down this path, we were running into the same problem. Yeah. Every time we went to see a retailer, whilst we had some great application technology, we ran into the issue of integration. Mm. So we went away and spent a long time thinking and looking at a different way of doing it, which is, could you abstract away from having to integrate at the point of sale? Could you take away the heavy lifting from doing it at the point of sale and actually connect the legacy environment of a retailer into the digital ecosystem mm. without having to change anything at the point of sale application layer mm. and do it in a way where they could plug and play people like reward technology, mm. like the, uh, this guy, like that guy, like make an it, app, make it flexible, like yeah. an application, yeah, yeah. be open, fully extensible, mm and make it possible for anything to be done. What does that actually do? Now it sets the table and sets the, the, the means of actually saying, OK, how do I want to engage with my customer? Mm. So the discussion point isn't, what are we going to do? It's going to be more about, how am I going to do it and what's going to work best for Sh me? Should we, should we move on to the customer? I, just, yeah. I don't know if you've got, either of you got any comments about, uh, there seems to be a bit of doubt yeah. about what the future holds for <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the winning yeah. solution up there. Yeah. Um, but probably takes us nicely on to the, the, next, um, uh, mm. the next poll, which is really about customers. And yeah. I'd just li like to ask the, the people out there, uh, who are your most loyal and best spending customer segment by age? Um, and uh, I think that's probably going to appear on your screen in a, minute, in a minute if you'd like to, uh, like to start pressing your buttons on that. And uh, back to Paul, actually, on the subject of customers. Um, could I ask you, talking about... You know, 
customers, they can be tech savvy or it can be tech naive or mm -hmm. tech completely independent. Where do, you, where do you see the continuing barriers for customers in retail as technology evolves? Uh, the, the issue for them really is um, it's a two-way thing. Okay. How far can you push them and how far can you pull them? Um, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, I, I think it, I mean, we've got a lot of people on the, on the call today, so we've got people from the fashion industry, from brands and from, from grocery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for that reason, I think it's, it, it's a different uh, solution for each one of them, quite frankly. Yeah. I think, for, as I, I, think I mentioned earlier, the, 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 the much younger sort of fashion brands, mm. they, 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 can, they work more on, on, on their sort of... Um, Communities. Mm. So, they, if you have an 18 to 4, 24 type brand for females, and you know Facebook is working particularly mm. well, well, actually, you don't have to go and look at other stuff. You can just do all your communications through Facebook. You can really build on that one piece mm. of the equation that you know is going to work for that sort of mindset. It's a small niche, though. Yeah. 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 Now, if, if you've got a grocery retailer, you've got a, a massive uh, age band. Mm. Uh, you've got massive uh, income uh, you know, from lo low to high. You've got people who are educated, uneducated, mm. tech savvy, mm. haven't got, and, and those who haven't got a clue how to you know, basically turn the phones on, quite mm. frankly. Okay. Um, and and <laughs> you just can't come up, you can't say, let's go Facebook, let's do NFC, let's do Bluetooth Lite. Mm. And, and for the, these grocery retailers are sitting there going, what the hell is the solution that's going to mm. bind everything together? Mm. Um, so for them, it, 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 it's very difficult. I think for the brands, again, they're, they're split up into various ways of either you know, trying, to, trying to market themselves through either Twitter or Facebook yeah. and various other bits. But it doesn't always work for everybody. So, so it's, a, it's a difficult model. Is it, uh, Jed, how do you see customers fitting into this? And well, well if, if, we, if we just hypothesize for mm -hmm. a minute, and it was an ideal sparkle world, mm -hmm. and we took away all this pain about the point of sale, okay. now we need to look at what's the next issue mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the equation to digital conversion for consumers. Come back to what Paul said earlier about paper coupons. Okay, so now we have an industry that's been over 100 years running that has not fundamentally changed how it operates. So at the moment, there are three, 400 billion coupons in paper format distributed every year, both in the United States and Western Europe. Um, three and a half to five billion of those are redeemed by consumers. That's a pretty small number. But Statistically, it shows that if you do a coupon campaign, it's relatively cheap to print and distribute. And irrespective of the redemptions, generally overall sales will go up by 10% because that real estate is pretty powerful. Now we're going to talk about going on to a digital scenario. And in that digital scenario, we're going to move this paper-based image onto a phone. Well, that's not really doing anything disruptive. But more of the challenge that comes from doing that is what happens at the side of the retailer when that coupon is taken in. Yeah. At the moment, all paper coupons are transported to what are called clearing houses, yeah. where thousands and thousands of people in places like Tijuana, Mexico, and Poland, and Fez, Morocco, yeah. manu that, manually yeah. recount everything. Yeah. So yeah. how are you going to get... It's great that we want to talk digital, mm. but you've got an infrastructure that can't support it yeah. at the moment. So that's one of the biggest challenges. And that, so what you have to figure out is, what do we know works? Well, hold on. Mm. Paul, Paul and his cards. That's what oh, we're yeah. yeah, right? Somebody, some people have already started to look at trying to load coupons to cards. Mm. Those are done at the way of only being retailer specific, so you National can't cards actually coupons on that's them. That's problem, yeah. But it's a hybrid model that's starting to get some traction. Mm. So is there a way that maybe you can build on that mm. and actually enhance those, coupon, those cards into taking national coupons, use the mobile as the communication channel, and together deliver something that actually migrates the market at a pace where it can bring the legacy along, mm. not rush to making it a fait accompli that it has to be mm. digital tomorrow, and actually progress at the speed that consumers in both brands and retailers can adopt to. That's what I think the vision is, and I think that's what we can help deliver. I think you, you, you mentioned earlier today something about the, um, uh, the willingness of uh, uh, consumers in a certain survey to use, use cards as opposed yeah, to... Um, <coughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I, as an example, yeah. there was a recent survey done yeah. here in one of the major UK towns where the town was going to offer a town centre loyalty card. Yeah. Uh, their target audience for this pr pr survey was 18 to 35-year-olds, so, yeah. you know, the real sweet spot yeah. for yeah. the yeah. forthcoming digital revolution. And they said, do you want an app yeah. or do you want a plastic card? 95% of the respondents said, I'll have a card. Seems incredible. Now, this is the generation that's supposed to be digitized. This is yeah. the generation that's supposed to be ready to embrace all yeah. this digital tech. Yeah. But the problem is, why didn't they say, some of the main responses were, apps drain my phone. Oh, it's right. really hard to find an offer in my application yeah. wallet. It's, I can't always find a charging point. 
but I always have my wallet on me, and I always have my cards, just like my mom or dad does. And your wallet doesn't run out of batteries, does right. it? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Cre yeah. so we also are yeah. forgetting the human element of all this. Yeah. These are creatures of habit, yeah. right? We've all, I grew up as a kid, you grew up, and we mm. all saw mom and dad use a card mm. at the, che at the mm. checkout. That's what people use. Yeah. And for grocers, at the moment, they're not so much convinced that fumbling around on your phone and mm. trying to do something like that isn't going to hold up the line, which yeah. is absolutely critical absolutely. to their business. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in a way, we've got these three, three things going on here. We've got the, um, uh, we've got the legacy systems over here, yeah, which are moving yep. slowly. Yeah. <laughs> we've got the consumers over here, which, are, which from, from what you're just saying there, rather reluctant to change. A little bit. And then we've got this thing that's just shooting ahead in the middle, which is the, the, um, the, the technology, the mobile technology, which is shooting ahead and we don't know where it's going. And how can we bridge the gap between you know, the legacy systems and the client through the use of mobile technology? Yeah, and yeah, in, yeah. In, 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 in a lot of ways, what, we're, what I think where Paul and I's vision was coming from is that what you have to do is mm -hmm. you have to find some way of bringing the legacy with you on this journey. Mm -hmm. You can't just cut it off and say it never existed because that's just mm. not going to work. Mm. And the current infrastructure just isn't ready to adapt overnight yeah. to yeah. a digital environment. Yeah. On the flip side of that, what you have to do is you have to enable retailers to want to participate in this space mm. in a way that isn't A, cost, time, or decision-making prohibitive. Mm. What they need to be able to do is prototype, plug and play, mm. test and learn, and experiment, just like the digital beasts that are knocking at their door all the time. Yep. And the only way they're going to be able to do that is to have the flexibility and the technologically de-risked opportunity at the point of sale where they can do those types of things without having to continually go back and make change requests. And I think, I think, and I think that is the way you have to unlock it because until you take away that obstacle, mm. it's never going to change because retailers will sit there and say, I love your idea, mm. but what can I do? Yeah. Well, we, we've, we've mentioned a, a lot of, along the way here. We've talked a lot about paper coupons. And I, I know that the... Uh, the, the the previous question uh, was, was a question for, really for the audience about what was their uh, most important uh, age segment, and I think you've seen the results there. Yeah. But the next question we have, the next poll is, is there's a correct and an incorrect answer on this one. What do you think are the current coupon redemption rates well, for really, paper yeah. coupons worldwide? And you've got a couple of options there. Um, and uh, while, we, uh, while we leave the, uh, the audience to, to vote on that, uh, back to you, Jed, because you've spoken quite a lot about paper coupons. You've mentioned the demise of the paper coupon, but surely the clever use of smartphone can, can fill that gap. You know, I'm not going to give away the answer just now, but I think, <laughs> I think people will be somewhat shocked to know that, you know, moving from paper to digital has not significantly increased redemption rates. Okay. Okay? No. It's so, and... 1%? And, and uh, not even. So, so then you have to ask yourself the question, well, hold on, wait a minute. By whole, sorry, by digital you mean actually going to the... On the phone. Yeah, yeah actually, digitally on the phone. Yeah, yeah. That has not resulted in massive response rates mm. over and above a small percentage. Mm. Why is that? Okay. First of all, the cost of a digital coupon right now can be up to 10 times more than it is to do a paper coupon. So for brands, oh. that's a big risk. Mm. It's a big investment. Because the infrastructure isn't there, it's complicated. Mm. For consumers, they're getting bombarded now with multiple channels. So, wait, I get my stuff in the post. I've got something on the internet. Oh, wait, now I've got something from my retailer loaded to my car. Oh, hold on a second. Then, whoa. Well, hold there's on. way too much confusion. confusion. There's, there's way yeah. too much. The problem that's happened right now is, is that so many people have jumped into this market, mm -hmm. all looking for that big, you know, next yeah. big gold mine. And the problem is they're, they're coming into this market not knowing about customers, not knowing about how retailers work, not knowing about how the brands work, mm -hmm. yeah. and just coming up with an idea and you know, gaining quite frankly stupid money from the Silicon Valley zone, the Silicon uh, Valley, uh, and, and being pumped with cash to come up with solutions, and mm. they just do not work. I mean, does, does go from end to end. Yeah. yeah, Apple and Google can't do it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it, 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 it is a bit bonkers. Mm. And Would they it, only I mean, have, they I mean, only I say, I mean, what's bit, really yeah. funny about Silicon Valley is, is we know how much money they invest every year. Yeah. Last year, the total face value of American issued paper coupons was over half a trillion dollars. The face value, half a trillion. Half a trillion dollars. Yeah. So, and so you're yeah, giving yeah. away that much value yeah. and you're still scoring fairly low. Yeah. Then we're going to try it digitally and it's not improving. Yeah. So somewhere, whilst they're all trying to get this ownership of the customer, they're forgetting mm. who the customer mm. is yeah, yeah. and they're forgetting how to have that deep engagement with that customer. Mm. And they're forgetting that actually you have to give that customer 
some kind of straight message, but in a way and shape that means they can choose. Mm. Exactly. And I think how, this how is how the whole thing. You know, the, 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 you know, they're trying to dictate to the customer the whole time. Do yes. this, do that. Mm. Well, actually, customers don't want to be dictated. They don't have the choice. and They want to know mm. it's a fairly simple thing. And it's not ten steps. And this whole idea of them having to go through hurdle after hurdle mm. after hurdle mm. to get the coupons, and it has to be delivered in this way, yeah. and have to go to this particular mm. shop. It, it, it's just it, it's crazy. Mm. And Stuff all over the place. A, a lot of the <laughs> NFC and Bluetooth light. You ask the average person in the street what does the NFC and Bluetooth light mean, I and mean, we all know, but the average person in the street hasn't got a clue what the hell we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of the latest innovations have been come up with technologists who are not retailers and mm -hmm. do, not, do not understand this whole space at all. And, and we know the most bottom line question in all of this. You want to sell me something to do with coupons and I'm a retailer. All you have to prove to me is that I'll get paid. Yeah, all right. pretty much. Somebody it. redeems that coupon, I'm going to get paid. Mm. I don't care how they redeem it necessarily. <laughs> I mean, I do, but you yeah. know what I'm getting yeah. at, right? Yeah. This is a fundamental point. People yeah. don't understand that if you were a big grocer and you've got people coming in day after day redeeming coupons, you're out a lot of money until such time as the settlement process takes place in a couple of weeks, maybe even longer. Oh, man. So who's going to guarantee this cash gap? And who, and who, quite frankly, if I'm a mobile player, um, is suddenly going to take on and become a clearinghouse tomorrow? You know, these guys that handle billions and billions mm. of dollars of cash every day yeah. on behalf of grocers and brands. Who's going to step up and take that place? By the way, what was the redemption rate? For paper coupons, it is approximately, on average, about 1.8%. 1.8%, okay. And in it. digital, yeah. it is 2.5, 2.6. So last year, for instance, 3.5 billion paper coupons got redeemed in the U.S. 187 million digital coupons got that's, redeemed that's in the U.S. just a, now, a drop that, in the ocean, isn't Well, it? I mean, yeah. what it, it tells you that paper isn't mm. going anywhere tomorrow. Mm. So mm. how do you bring kind of what you were saying in mm. earlier in the conversation, you have these multiple speed things. Yeah. Well, now this one that's speeding ahead yeah. isn't getting the traction it needs. Mm. So how do you actually balance the books? Because you got to, and this is what we're talking about, you've got mm. to find a way of bringing that bridge to the past that can progress to the future. Putting the customer back into this equation again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People are not thinking about the customer. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, it, it's just got to change. I mean, if it doesn't change, it's, it's you know, so the, well, the whole promise is the whole promise of what this is all supposed to bring yeah. is going to trip over. Mm. But we, we've we talked, uh, we've mentioned the U.S. and we've mentioned um, sure. uh, so, so, some other countries. But um, this is a this is a, a global challenge potentially. Um, and our, our final poll question, actually, is um, to the audience: is how much do you think the global couponing industry is currently worth? Oh. Um, and there's some options up there for you. Okay. Um, we may have had a clue from uh, some of the <laughs> figures that, that you mentioned before. Uh, somebody can do the, do well, the math. Well, there's, there's, the there's math, a difference between the, the face yeah. value is what's printed on the piece yeah, of yeah, paper. Yeah, 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 It's not actually what the industry itself is worth. Uh, okay. So there's a, there's a distinction there. Um, but it would be, uh, be interesting to see what, what, uh, what the audience thinks of that. Um, but uh, we talked about different levels of sophistication of, of mm. typical customers. I think we're assuming sort of in the developed world there, but th there are different uh, differences across borders. And do you Certainly, see an, an yeah. all-encompassing global solution, or do you see each territory finding its own way, Paul? Um, I think it'll be, th there'll be event eventually there'll be a solution that is, makes common sense mm. and is easy for people to use. Mm. Uh, but definitely territory by territory is going mm. to be different things that mm. work. Um, and that's for a lot of reasons. I mean, if you look at somewhere like, say, Singapore, yeah. they've got some of the best retail technology in place. They're way ahead. Mm. Yet other parts of the, the important equation of getting the right, uh, working with the right data, getting the communication mm. right and all the rest just doesn't work. In fact, they're they're pretty dire at actually data analysis in, in Singapore. Okay. So even though they pull it all in, they don't do very much with it. Mm. But they've got all the technology for it to work. Mm. Yes. So it, it, it's, it's, it's quite strange. I mean, mm. America, again, American, I think, uh, some of the Western mm. European countries are very, very good at data analysis and mm. know really a lot about the customers, mm -hmm. and yet they f lag right behind on, on the post technology. Because you're not getting a lot of data out of the paper couponing, are you? There is no data. There's yeah, no data. Uh, this is it, yeah. So what about well, what about what about loyalty transactional data, which is very rich. which is rich, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think a lot of countries have, have sort of felt, oh, I don't be carrying plastics, mm. and then you go to mobile mm -hmm. phones, and actually you just don't get data from the mobile mm -hmm. phones. It doesn't give you the transactional data you need right. to understand the customer. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think maybe that's I mean because there is data because obviously it goes to the clearinghouse and mm. a brand does get that information. Eventually, but it's but it's this connectivity. It's not sold no, but yeah. it's the, it's it's not the connectivity to the customer. I, I think the other I think building on that about 
different areas of the world. Um, it's a little bit of like that story because at, at, across all of this world, everybody uses a point of sale. Yeah, okay. retailers, yeah. retailers mm -hmm. use point of sale. Most of them are designed and built the same way, and they all have a sun, some fundamental common points, which mm. if you want to do anything like what we're talking about, require integration. Mm. So, you know, with our vision, it's about if you can take away the pain, then it really just becomes an open forum for people to experiment and develop with. So how you develop something in Singapore might be a straight to digital proposition because mm. they've never had couponing there before in the paper mm. format. Mm. Whereas, you know, here in the West, it might be more of a hybrid model mm. because obviously that's part of what the issue is. You have to have something that help, helps the legacy mm. come forward with the future. Mm -hmm. um, but the biggest thing that's exciting about the new world, mm. potentially, is A, you can jump straight to the head of the queue about how you do this. Mm. But the other thing is, is that that whole world of brand and consumer engagement has barely been touched. So whilst they're really good at getting the data, as you say, there's not a lot to do with it. So imagine um, being able to suddenly turn a key and have, a, and have all of that potential new consumer mm. engagement and be able to own that quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think there's all kinds of things to play for, but the lowest common denominator is taking away that pain and the point of sale, mm -hmm. because that's, the first, that's where everything gets killed, is when you come in with a great idea, great solution, and the retailer says, do I need to integrate with my till? And you say yes, and that's yep. the end of it. <laughs> so uh, w one of the things I think you're, uh, you're saying, that if, if, you, uh, if there was some, well, there are plenty of countries around the world who never had paper coupons, mm. they'd never have paper coupons in no. the future. It's not something anybody's going to invent today. No, no, no. no. So, I mean, it would be fair and to say... And there's reasons. I mean, yeah. there's some countries are literally, the post doesn't get there. Yeah. The story. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that happens in, in places like Moscow as well. So, so the chances of somebody is. actually making that, that leap into the, the whatever the digital solution is in a country where it doesn't, is, is probably greater than... Well, yeah, because they don't know the difference. That's right. They've yeah. never been exposed to the other. Okay, so what, uh, well, the answer on this was we, we, we estimate, is that right, I think, yeah. on this question? yeah. yeah. Yeah, 15 that's about billion, right. yeah. Yeah, that's, the, yeah, that's, that's about but right. But I think you were telling me before, the numbers aren't all that specific sometimes on no, these things. No, but, yeah. but, but the forecasts are that mm. it all should be going exponential and that mobile and this and all of mm. this is going to explode and go ballistic. Mm -hmm. Come back to what I've been saying, you know, there is a huge legacy environment, not only of IT, mm. of an industry that for 100 years has operated a system of they look after the money, mm. they make sure retailers get paid, so you tell me how, like that, it's all going to disappear and change into something else. And, and it's just not. One of the questions that actually came in, um, uh, came in earlier was about that, that, that very point. It, the question was, could there not be substantial resistance from interested parties who would look to protect their positions and prevent change? Uh, you know, I, 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 I would like to think that everybody's going to be resisting for the sake of resisting. They've probably got very valid reasons. Or yeah. Well, but, yeah. I mean, I, I guess from my point of view, I think... Mm -hmm. I think if you take away the pain point at the point of sale, you can turn around to guys like the clearinghouses mm. who right now are really heavily invested into logistics and people. Mm. Look, guys, happy for you to stay doing what you're doing, which is really at your core, mm. you settle up the money. Mm. I'll just make it easier for you to get that data. For the retailer, I can make it that suddenly all those coupons linked to a customer mm. means that his data is 10 times more valuable than it was. Yep. And for the point of sale guy, who might think that this is, a, this is an attack on them. It's not. I understand where they've come from as an industry. Mm -hmm. What I can help them to do is say, look, how would you guys like to get agile? Mm -hmm. How would you like to have that flex? But more importantly, how would you like to be able to package up your own point-of-sale software mm -hmm. solutions and be able to sell them to other clients that don't use your box? Mm -hmm. So app your applications, maybe your loyalty, your CR. So everybody in this becomes a winner. And that presumably including the client, uh, the customer as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is where, which is what he, which is what he's putting in everybody's hand. Yeah. It's, it's put. Yeah. I mean, I mean, to focus on the customer, and the rest will follow. I think. Mm. Um, mm. And you know, if you look at the paper industry in the states, as, as you mentioned before, it's so huge mm. and so antiquated, and so deeply entrenched that actually they're not particularly worried about what's happening. Um, so, uh, as we said earlier on, globally, there's different things happening in different places. The problem we're seeing with digital is that it's not really getting really embedded in, in, into the culture in any, in any, in any, uh, in any territory. Mm. And, so, and, uh, yeah, and, and just one last quick point. Mm. I think one thing that's never been really asked is when we talk about mobile futures and all of that and coupons, what nobody's actually asking the question is, is the representation of what a coupon today going to change? What do we consider a couponing of the future to be? Mm. Is it more like a social coupon? 
Is it more like a, a virtual coupon, you know, something like a Bitcoin or something like that? You know, the idea that Paul or you could be your own coupon issuers because of the, of the ability to check and balance that at the till. Mm -hmm. yeah. And who, who are the issuers of that as well? Which is a, yeah, it, well, exactly, because you might be, you might, because you've advocated a brand, mm. they might give you 100 coupons to share with your mm. friends. Um, we've, men we've mentioned uh, over the course of the last half an hour mm. or so that the word hybrid solution. Yeah. yeah. And we, we mentioned Mrs. Mrs. Jones as well a little bit Absolutely. earlier on, but I mean, would either of you like to... Uh, Sure. Share with it your well, he knows her more intimately than I do. Okay, so, over to you, so <laughs> perhaps you want to talk us through the... So the really, really, the way we sort of have looked at this whole solution is how do we, how do we look at a real customer? Mm. When the, you, know, you should really be influencing at the start of the journey, and people are forgetting this. They're all, you know, the, the best a retailer can get to is actually send them an offer as you're leaving the store, because it's the first time they know you've arrived. The first time a retailer knows you arrives is when you swipe your loyalty card when you're exiting. That, that happens to me every time at my local, my local um, supermarket. I won't give the name. No names. But as I leave, they give me a voucher to bring next time. And oh, I'm thinking... <laughs> no, no names, but I know... Can I not use it now? And I can't use it now. So there well, you go. Of course, you don't I, walk I, back into a retail store to use your vouchers. I mean, it's, uh, it's oh, all about getting you back. Yeah. Well, I, sh I share but the, your loyalty, I share the pain, yeah. but, but a retailer who, who works loyalty correctly, and that's what they all should be focused on, you should be going back there anyway. It shouldn't really be on a piece of paper which says you saved some money or there might be some for the next one. <laughs> okay. and This is what I, I guess I find so frustrating is the data they have is so rich. It's mm. amazing data. Mm. And it, it really is what's keeping, what's mm. making the big supermarkets really work. Mm. You know, Tesco, let's just pick Tesco mm. because we, we, know, we all know mm. this story about Tesco. Tesco was number three in the UK. It's now, it was now number three in the, in, in the world mm. because it used data correctly. And mm. from that, all these other sophisticated retailers globally have used the same sort of work that Tesco put in to get where it did today. Uh, there's no denying that the more you know about a, a customer, the more you can influence So them. you're talking about using so that data as they walk in. When How? Mrs. Jones walks yeah, in, yeah. give her the right offers then. Influence her shop. You know what she buys week in, week out. You know what other people like her buy. Mm. And just stretch that basket. Yeah. Start using your intelligence to get her more loyal, get more books out of her, out of, uh, out of her, her purse mm. every week. And get her buying all of her products. And how, in how could we, store. how could we actually get that, uh, that, those offers to her? And presumably by something she's carrying. Yes, um, but if you look at mobile right now, mm -hmm. it, you know, I think the latest statistic we saw before we started the session mm -hmm. was that females in the UK over the age of 35, 27 mm -hmm. percent had a mobile phone. Mm -hmm. Out of them, nine and a half percent had geolocation on. Mm -hmm. So unless you've got geolocation, a smartphone. Mobile phone or smartphone? Yeah. Smartphone. Smartphone. Yeah, yeah. smartphone my apologies. Yeah, yeah. So everybody's chasing this whole three, four, five, maybe six, seven percent in, in, in regions around the world. Mm. Everybody. Mm. And we're saying, step back. They all have mobile phones. So maybe it isn't about the mobile phone itself. Maybe it's a different way of connecting. And Absolutely. Maybe it's a case of being able to trigger that when Mrs. Jones walks in and knowing it's her. You know her mobile number in any way, mm. and send her your, your messages through text, or if she has got a smartphone, through email or apps or whatever it is. But try and influence a journey at the start, not mm. at the finish. Okay. Um, and we just think the whole equation needs to be looked at you know, from a different angle. And, okay. and, and building on that, what you, what you take from that is, if look, there's no doubt that the mobile is becoming the personalized, deep communication channel, mm. deep consumer experience, right? I think, I think nobody's going to argue that. But... It, it, it has some limitations about practicalities beyond certain things in, 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 in applications in retail. Mm. And, and I think where, I think where uh, Paul, in helping Mrs. Jones to get through this journey, mm. is that idea that the phone is the communication and mm. what I would call the offer manager. Yeah. Okay. Where effectively what Mrs. Jones can do is choose which offers, be they national or retailer-centric, mm. offers can be swept to that card she can then go to the checkout, and because of what we've done by taking away the heavy lifting at the till, mm. taking away the need for integration, we can make it possible for that card to be instantly recognized, mm. do the verification, electronically clear that coupon, pass the information onto the clearinghouse for direct settlement. Mm. Everybody's a winner. So and Ms. None Mrs. Of that, Jones and has to have the card, though. I mean, that's, that's, well, that's, yeah, that's, that's the start point. Yeah. I mean, the identifier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, as we all said, the most sophisticated retailers in the world are sophisticated because of used Card data. Okay, yeah. but, but more That's importantly, but more yeah. importantly, what's really clever here, and why I really was hooked on reward technology, is their card is designed to say, you know what, depending on what stage you are of a retailer mm -hmm. in this digital journey, so are you still using MagStripe? That's cool. That supports it. 
Are you still using, are you looking to maybe go with some QR code? That's okay, it supports it. Are you looking just at plain barcodes? Mm. So, so what's great is, is it's, it's got that whole thing of saying, as this journey goes along, mm. you can actually migrate the customer as part of it, and they don't know the difference. You see mm. that? In other words, you're not having to go back and say to them, oh, we're stopping the card, and now it's all going to be this. Mm. You actually have the ability to, and, and the flexibility of that means that for the retailer, the challenge would be all of those things, so mm. moving from barcode to magstripe to dot, mm. would require a change request. Mm. So if they deploy what we do, all of that goes away, and it just, it's just an even flow, and what they can get back to is focusing on the customer, right offer, right message, right so, time. So if, if I'm, I'm not Mrs. Jones, obviously, but if I was Mr. Jones, my experience is I walk in the store, I get, I get a message, is that right, on my, on so my as mobile get, yeah, phone? As soon as yeah. you walk in the store. I get identified because I'm carrying identified some sort of card. You're because the card yeah. you have. It's automatic. You don't do anything with So I card. decide to take the three for two offer or the yep. or yep. whatever, or the reduction or whatever. Um, I just put it in my basket, turn up at the till. Swipe your card. Finished. It's redeemed. Yeah. Uh, so really nothing's changed for me apart from the fact that I'm getting information before. Right. Rather than after. So, so it's empowering the legacy environment. Mm. You see, it's digitizing the legacy environment without mm. making it have to be a whole mm. new environment. Mm. Right? And in your POS world, all of this is just going straight through the system. Yeah. And redemption happens there and then. Yep, and, we can yeah. do that. We can do that in partnership, uh, feed mm. that information straight to mm. the clearinghouse, take it on board with the way of, of making it a mm. means to doing uh, mm. direct settlements so the retailer is guaranteed and mm. is focused on their payment. But the other thing is, is that we can then plug in other people. So mm. as Paul develops mm. and other people want to get more into this space, they can come along and just plug in with us. So we're not, we're not really, we're not trying to be exclusive. Mm. And that's the other difference mm. is, is that often retailers get this push to say, you have to buy my solution. Mm. What we're saying is if you put the bridge in, mm. it, it's basically a multi-lane highway mm. and you can put whatever through you want. And this is a hybrid solution, which, which isn't necessarily the solution for, for, for the next 50 years, because we've got no idea no. where the next no. 20, 50 years is going, but it's something that could work. But it's a start, it, but, it, but it's, it's, a, it's a point that... It's a, level, way, to bring, it's a way to bring yeah. people it's to levels the playing what field. digital is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you're delivering digital, but you live in the way that they want it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, the retailer doesn't have to dictate to them. Mm -hmm. the no, no one dictates anyone. You leave the choice mm -hmm. open to the, to the customer. Mm -hmm. this, this is actually the point where retailers, marketing department... Mm -hmm can actually sit down with IT and talk about what are we going to prototype, what can we work on, mm -hmm. and they can let their imaginations run wild a little bit. So this creates an, an easy platform on which Absolutely. For everybody to work. It takes, yeah. a, it takes away that barrier to say every mm -hmm. time we come up with some fantastic ideas, mm -hmm. we know this is going to get killed because of the integration yeah, cost. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we, we've only got a couple of minutes left. I'd just like to ask both of you, what, what would you like the, the people watching this? I know there's a be a, you know, a varied audience of different people, but what, what, what are the, perhaps each of you two things that you'd really like them to go away and think about uh, as a result of listening to what they've heard today? Um, I would say for those, who, for those who understand the customers inside out and have, can really contain them, mm. carry on, work out what the best form of communication, that single mm. platform is, mm. implement it, work it to the nth degree, mm. brilliant. Mm. For those of you who've got a very varied customer base, You've got to stop chasing what the latest piece of innovation is happening on the mobile phone okay. because, quite frankly, you've got a five-year cycle. Mm. Yeah. Um, there's no point in thinking, what's going to be here after Bluetooth Lite? What, Focus what, on Will tomorrow, that be the latest thing yeah. that everybody works on? Yeah. You've got to step right back and ask yourself, what works for everybody? Mm. And how can I implement something that will suit the, my, ent my entire customer base and give back the option? So it's all about opening up a channel mm. and mm. give the choice out to the customer. A channel which is a multiple highway, you said, I think you said, yeah. it's a multiple options. Uh, and what would your, your couple of things be that uh, um, people I guess about? I guess my first question would be to anybody out there is if you could take away, or not if, mm. by taking away the issue of integration, mm. by saying now that you can plug that legacy environment mm. straight into the digital ecosystem, mm. what do you want to do? Mm. Because probably for most of them, they haven't had the chance to really kind of just ask themselves that question. That question yeah. Because this long-term strategy is all about predictability. Well, if we do this, then maybe this will happen. Mm -hmm. Take all that away and say, would we like to be able to be prototyping some, some new digital CRM customer or shopper activation apps within the next six months within our retail environment and chop and change and learn which works best? Mm -hmm. Mix that in with our loyalty card, maybe involve some of our direct mailing activity, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Suddenly that world of omni-channel retailing is becomes fact and mm, not yeah. fiction. Yeah. So that's, that's my first point. Second mm. point I'd like to ask people to take away is, 
what do they actually think if all of this is possible that we've talked about today? What do they think the idea of couponing will become for them? Because, you know, uh, as an example, just a little bit of a blue sky here, mm -hmm. um, as I was talking with Paul kind of in our, in our mad sessions, um, I said to him, well, look, you know, what if this could all link out to a consumer's Facebook page? What if you could take the concept of turning a Facebook like into a currency representation, like a coupon, wow. okay, yeah. and deduct that from the sale, mm. deduct that like a coupon at the checkout and have that verified? Mm. What would the power of that digital pa to physical path to purchase be mm. for some people? What would that data to the brands mm. be worth? That'd be worthwhile, yeah. 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 So once we can get this, this basic platform in place, that the yeah, kind of I, I think so the many options I think, arise, I think yeah. the potential, yeah, and to go away and really think about, mm. if I could link all this together now, I can link my customer to the right offer, and I know that they've redeemed that offer, and now I've got that closed loop, what would that really mean for me as a business? Mm. Fantastic. Well, I, th I think we've just about come to the, the end of our allotted time. Um, I would like to um, thank Paul, thank Judd for their, for their input. I think they've given us a... A lot of background yep. on, on the industry. Um, uh, they've pointed out quite a lot of challenges in <laughs> yeah. the industry. And a lot of opportunities. A lot of opportunities. Well, it's challenges, not, yeah. yeah. To be clear, retailers are in a great position. Yeah. Yep. Those who've done their work over the last few years and gained data are in a great position. They've just got to make the right choice now. Okay. And what they need is to stop worrying about the cost for them to participate in this digital world. Mm -hmm. Because I think, I think Paul and I are of the same mind that... I think there is enough pie out there that people are wanting to engage with shoppers, they're wanting to drive shopper activation, that really I think we believe on a wide scale basis that the platform can be delivered into retailers at very little cost. And, um, uh, and I think some of the challenges were challenges which Mrs. Jones was going to face. She was a little bit worried about things at the beginning, but I think you've given, <laughs> given her and the rest of us a, perhaps a, a, yes. a glimpse of the future which could make life yeah, better for her as well, without changing the yeah. way she does she, things. She's, she's come home and boasted about what a canny shopper she is. Fantastic. <laughs> so thank you very much indeed. Uh, for the audience, I, I, if, you, if you would like to get in touch with uh, Paul or Judd, you will find their, their details on the, uh, uh, on, on the website as you, um, as you log out. And I also believe that this, uh, uh, this uh, Google Hangout will appear... Uh, on, online in the very near future in recorded form if you want to <laughs> perhaps watch it again yeah. or share it with friends. So uh, from uh, Canary Wharf in London, thank you very much and thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you.